Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's Two Minute Tuesday, we're going to be taking a look at a few questions and tips regarding XREFs or external references within AutoCAD. These seem to come up often and I wanted to touch on a few of them today to help clear things up. Uh, let's jump right in. <laughs> All right, so jumping right into today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at external references. In the video, we're gonna to touch on a few tips when bringing them into your drawing, including settings and options to make your life easier in the process. And I'm also gonna walk you through the process of adding an external reference to a drawing. Uh, to start, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Insert tab up here, and you can choose Attach. This is gonna allow you to choose an image, a drawing, DWG, uh, PDF, a DGN, as well as a few other files to reference into your drawing. This is gonna allow that drawing image object to be seen in your drawing, but it's not gonna insert all of the line work. And I'm gonna show you what that means here in a second. Uh, another option would be using the uh, external references toolbar here uh, or flyout to add by right clicking in this area here and then attaching a specific type of drawing, image, DWF, DGN, or PDF file type. To turn on or off this external references uh, palette, you can simply hit this little arrow here on the reference uh, box of the insert tab. Hitting it again is gonna open it up. And we're gonna bring in a DWG that I've got saved in this reference folder here. Uh, you can see I've already called it XREF to kind of differentiate it from any other drawing files. And we're just going to add that by going to our window here, right clicking, attaching a DWG, and pasting the path where I've saved it. Now you can browse for it as well. And this could be any file type that is recognized. In our case, we're using the DWG option. Double clicking or selecting it is going to bring up your external reference dialog box here. And this is where the settings are gonna come in handy and where you can choose how your XREF is going to be set up within your drawing. Now I go into a lot more of the specifics of how to actually insert external references in my course, which you can check out. Uh, I'll put that link down below and up above right now. It's called AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows, and in it I touch on and explain a handful of workflows within AutoCAD as well as explaining and teaching the fundamentals including external references. But for our video, we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of options that are gonna help you in the long run here. One is the path type. When you're inserting an XREF into a drawing, you have the choice between three different path types. The default within AutoCAD is typically going to be set to relative path. For many cases, this is probably the option you're gonna to want to use. What this means is that the path of the XREF file, so if I pull my box, uh, my explorer back over here, this path here is relative to where your drawing is saved. Let's say your drawing is saved in the production folder here. As long as all of the folders within here, so the file and folder where your drawing is saved, as well as the folder where your reference is saved, as long as those stay the same, they can move within other folders, but as long as the relative path, so in our case, it would be up two folders, so one, two, and then in production to get to your drawing, as long as that relative uh, path stays the same, the link is not gonna break within your DWG to your XREF. But if that moves, it will break. This makes relative paths within XREFs uh, ideal for those working on servers with many projects or with the uh, chance of an entire project folder moving say to an archive folder or being saved to a backup, your paths are still going to work. The second option here is the full path and that is simply going to be the entire path to get to the XREF. So it's gonna include say your C or maybe you're on a P drive or an N drive if you're on a network server. Uh, this entire path has to stay the same or your link is gonna break. That's why it's not always beneficial, especially if you're on a server setup that may have changing folders or changing project names. 
which would in turn break the links to your xrefs. So in most cases, you're going to want to stick to the default, but there are specific cases where say you're going to a base data folder that's always in the same folder or file path uh, where full path may be helpful. And then no path is not going to work unless that your xref is in the same folder as your drawing and the name doesn't change. Uh, again, this could be simpler if you're keeping all of your drawings in the same folder, but as you'd learn if you say watch my course or as you use AutoCAD more, uh, it's a good practice to keep your references in a separate folder from your production drawings to keep things clean and to eliminate any mistakes or issues with different revisions or duplicate data being used. All right, so the second setting I wanted to touch on when inserting or setting up your XRefs and one that can be really important in the long run of projects is the reference type. In general, you're gonna to wanna to start or default with overlay uh, as your reference type rather than attachment. The difference between the two is that an overlay will be ignored in subsequent drawings. Uh, so say we insert this reference into our example drawing here, and then later down the road, we actually insert our example drawing as a reference into a production or final drawing. In the case of an overlay, this drawing that we've inserted into here is going to be ignored or forgotten about when we insert our example drawing into a production drawing. In the case of an attachment, this is permanently attaching our floor plan drawing into our example drawing. So when we insert our example drawing into say a final or a production drawing, both the example drawing and the floor plan drawing are gonna be added to that drawing. Now that can be useful in some cases, but in a lot of cases, it can also lead to circular references where the same drawings will end up being referenced into a final or production drawing because say you may have inserted the base floor plan reference into an electrical drawing, a lighting drawing, a plumbing or heating drawing as well. So what you could end up having is a bunch of references to a, the same drawing or multiple drawings referring to each other uh, in this kind of circular reference. And what this can do is create errors and issues as well as kind of a never ending uh, reference update loop. Uh, it's something you want to avoid. So in general, you're going to want to default to the overlay option here. You can always change this later and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, but this is a safe way to prevent any circular references further down the road when you're making production drawings. So the rest of the settings here, as I mentioned, I go into these in my course, but in general, you're going to be able to set your scale your insertion point and your rotation within this dialog box here. And then the units here are just displayed uh, telling you what unit type your reference drawing is currently set to. You're going to want to make sure this matches uh, or a factor makes sense if you're going from inches to feet or meters to centimeters or millimeters, for instance. Uh, checking either of these boxes is going to let you choose this point uh, once you hit OK within your drawing if you want to snap to something in particular. Same as scale, you're going to be able to scale on the fly when you insert this if you check that box. By default, I'm just going to leave both of these so that it's going to get inserted at 0, 0 in my drawing and a standard 1 scale. Hitting OK is going to bring our reference into our drawing and you can see now that we have a floor plan referenced into our example drawing. Here we could now add some labels, maybe some uh, hatching or square footage areas, or maybe we want to add HVAC or plumbing uh, line work onto the floor plan. Uh, we can do all of that now without actually affecting our floor plan drawing. This is just a image or a look into the referenced file. Now, before we go here, I just wanted to show you if you'd like to change from an overlay to an attachment later on down the road, going to your reference uh, manager here, simply clicking on it and going down to the bottom, clicking on overlay, you can simply change to attach and that's gonna automatically switch the reference type from one to the other. It's a simple fix, uh, which is why I'll typically start with overlay to prevent any of those issues or possible issues down the road. Uh, once you have your reference in your drawing, you have a few options. You can select it and right click 
and then simply go to open XREF here to open up the drawing that the XREF is linked to. This can be helpful if you need to make changes to the original or if you just want to go into it and see what's going on, check layers, check things that are turned on and off. It gives you a quick and easy path into the XREF drawing uh, without having to search for it. Another cool feature or option is if you would like to insert this permanently in your drawing and not have it referenced anymore, this can be useful when you're sending a drawing out to say a client or getting it ready to save and archive. Attaching or binding all of your references into your drawing can be helpful in some cases. By selecting your XREF, right clicking and choosing the external references manager here or simply opening up this flyout, choosing an XREF, right clicking on it and selecting bind will do just that. It's going to bind this drawing into your drawing, removing the need to have the reference. Uh, but this is not going to be super useful unless you are say sending a drawing out and you didn't want to send a handful of DWG reference files. Binding everything into your drawing makes it easy to send a single drawing. Uh, you have the two options, bind and insert. I'm not going to get into those today, but I do have another video that I'll link down below where we dive into those. So that's all for today's quick XREF tips and settings. I hope you guys enjoyed and got something useful out of this video. If you'd like to learn a lot more about AutoCAD and references in particular, definitely check out my course that just came out, that AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows. I'll put that link again down below and up above. And if you like this tip and want to keep up to date with any of the new ones I put out, I put out a new video every Tuesday, and you can do that by subscribing down below and hitting that like button to help. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good one. Cheers. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here to make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.